want to discuss ratio analysis, and here I want to specifically discuss liquidity measures. So liquidity measures measure a firm's ability to meet short-term financial obligations. Okay, you can be exceptionally profitable, but if you can't pay your bills on time, you're likely going to get into some sort of trouble financially. So it's important that you have enough cash on hand or you have enough assets to pay for things that you have. And then why do we look at ratios? Well, we look at ratios because ratios allow for comparisons. So when you just look at an absolute number, it doesn't make any sense, right? If you see, you know, somebody's weight, somebody weighs 300 pounds, somebody weighs 50 pounds, right? And I said, who's more roly-poly? Well, you don't know unless you know how tall the person is, right? If you took a ratio of, you know, weight to height or something like that, then you might have a gauge because that person who weighs 300 pounds might be seven feet, five inches tall, in which case they're probably not very roly-poly. They might not be skinny, but they're not, you wouldn't consider them portly. On the other hand, if the person who weighs 50 pounds is only three feet tall, they might be kind of roly-poly. So you have, to, you have to gauge these. So here, for example, we're looking at current assets divided by current liabilities for the current ratio. So current assets are things like cash, accounts receivable, inventories, and marketable securities. Okay, these are things that you expect to turn to cash within a year. Now, cash is already cash. Okay, you expect to, you know, collect on your accounts receivable. You can cash out your marketable securities anytime you want. And you expect to sell that inventory. Current liabilities are things you expect to pay within the year. Wages payable, taxes payable, etc. So if you take that ratio of current assets to current liabilities, you get some gauge that you can compare to a leading competitor or to the industry average. So, uh, you know, a big company is going to have a lot more current assets than a small company but they're also going to have a lot more current liabilities. So the ratio gives us some, some ideas to where they stand. So I don't know where this came from, but I, I used to hear it when I took accounting class that a ratio of two was good. Is two good? Well, I don't know. I actually asked somebody who was an accountant in one of my classes and she said, yeah, they still use that number, but if you actually look at the current ratio of a lot of companies these days, you know, successful companies, Apple and some of the other ones, it's actually um, many times well below that ratio of two. But you certainly don't want to have more liabilities, more current liabilities than you have current assets. And the reason the, the you know, what's a good number may have changed may be because of inventory management systems and things like that. All right. Another ratio that's commonly looked at to measure liquidity is what we call the quick ratio. So what we do is it's essentially the current ratio, but in the numerator, we subtract out inventory. And we do that because you're not really sure if you're going to be able to sell that inventory. Certainly, you didn't invest in it with the notion that it wouldn't sell, but it doesn't always sell. So, for example, Amazon a very successful company where you it seems like everything they touch turns to gold, they introduced something called the Amazon Fire Phone. Okay, they thought they could get into the phone business, you know, like the iPhone or, you know, Google Pixel or, you know, Samsung or any of these other companies, and it would be a great way to help them to sell more merchandise on Amazon, right? They have an app on the phone. It would be easy to shop on Amazon. Now, I'm going to guess that none of you knows anybody who ever had an Amazon Fire Phone. They, they, they scrapped that. It seemed like it was only a month or two after they introduced it. Nobody bought it, right? So sometimes you want to subtract out inventory to get a better gauge as to your ability to meet financial obligations. And then there's the cash ratio, which is just cash divided by current liabilities. So 
let's take a look at how we compute this. So here I have a balance sheet. And here we look at total current assets. So we're just going to do 2018, 2168 divided by current liabilities, okay, which is 1995, and you get 1.09. So if we were going by that gauge of two, this is uh, this is a bit low, okay. But again, it's not clear to me that two is that magic number anymore. The quick ratio. We're going to subtract out inventory, so the 2168 minus inventory of 501, again divided by current liabilities, 0.84. And then here we have the cash ratio, which is cash 108 divided by uh, 1995, and it's 0.05. Okay. What do you do with these numbers? Well, they don't mean much to us right now. You need to compare them to something, so you compare them to uh, a leading competitor, you compare them to the industry average. Okay, that's what we do all the time. Okay, students compare GPAs with others, or their SAT scores, or their LSAT scores. If you're a sports fan, right, you look at you know batting average and stuff. I mean, if you saw, for example, when you knew nothing about baseball, and you saw somebody who was successful only three out of ten times, you would say. That's terrible, right? If you only get 30% on your exams, that's generally not good. But if you if you're a 300 batter, you have a 300 batting average, you're headed to the Hall of Fame, right? Likewise, let's say for uh, you know an NFL quarterback who completes you know 60, 65, even 70% of their passes, okay? You know, again, that's kind of C or D work in a classroom where we say, well, you know, 90 or above is an A and 80 or above is a B, etc. You know, um, but again, if you're completing 70% of your passes, you're on the path to the Hall of Fame. Okay, that's phenomenal. So this is why we compute these ratios so we can compare them. Right? Is that 1.09 bad? Well, what do other companies in the industry have? Right? Is that 0.84 for the quick ratio bad? What do other companies in the industry have? Because you don't want to just compare it to any company. Okay, different industries have different, um, you know, ways they're running their business, and some require more liquidity. Some don't require as much liquidity. So again, this is a way to do some analysis and comparison.